In this video, two robots are described that have the ability to follow a black line on a white background. The robots rely on the fact that black surfaces reflect less light than white surfaces. If the LEGO We Do 2.0 distance sensor is placed near the floor, it can detect how much light is being reflected. When it's on a black surface, very little light is reflected back to the distance sensor, so it thinks the object is far away and gives a readout that is high, like near 10. When the distance sensor is placed on a white surface, more light is reflected back to the distance sensor, so it thinks the object is close by and gives a readout that is low, close to zero. But how much reflected light is being detected? Well, that will depend on many factors. How white is the white background surface? How dark is the line? How much light is there in the room? How close is the sensor to the floor? Other things. So you need to determine the threshold for your robot empirically. Simply place your robot on a white background and see what value the distance sensor is giving. You can do that by looking in the lower right-hand corner of the LEGO We Do 2.0 app. Then place your robot on the black line and determine the output from the distance sensor. Finally, you can pick a value that is between the output for the white background and the value for the black line. And that will be your threshold. Anything above the threshold will be considered black and anything below the threshold will be considered white. Now, let me tell you the trick with the line following robots. The trick is realizing that you don't have the robot follow the black line. Huh? What do you mean? Instead, you have the robot follow the boundary of the black line and the white background. For this example, let's put the robot on the right side of the line. When the robot falls off the boundary onto the white background, you just make the robot turn left. This will bring the robot back towards the black line. When the robot senses black, make the robot turn to the right. This results in the robot driving in a zigzag pattern, following the boundary between the black line and the white background. How do these LEGO We Do 2.0 line following robots turn? Well, they use creative changeover mechanisms. I previously described changeover mechanisms in my airplane video that I will link in the description below. Basically, a changeover mechanism has two distinct outputs from one input. In this case, the two outputs are turn left or turn right. Here, the bright green beam is only attached to the motor by one connection point. So when the motor turns, the bright green beam rotates until the large black gear meshes with the perpendicular tan gear and ultimately spins the wheel on that side of the robot. Then when the motor switches directions, the beam rotates to the other side and the large black gear meshes with the other perpendicular tan gear spinning the wheel on that side. Here is an example of the code for my line following robot. Let's look in the upper left corner. When the green arrow is pressed, the distance sensor will continually send out a message with its current output. I've set my threshold to be six. If the distance sensor output is six or less, the robot is sensing white and the motor should spin clockwise, which will make the robot turn left. If the distance sensor output is seven or more, the robot is sensing black and the motor should spin counterclockwise to make the robot turn right. When troubleshooting your robot and code, I suggest that you place the robot on the white background and confirm that the robot turns left. Then place your robot on the black line and verify that the robot turns right. Only after confirming both behaviors should you test the robot on a black line. 
When trying to optimize your line following robot, it helps to start with a wide black line with no curves. In my example, I'm using a one and three quarter inch wide line. If you use a thin line, your robot may completely cross the black line before it has had enough time to turn. And then your robot will encounter the white background on the other side and mistakenly start turning even further away from the line. But with a wide, fairly straight black line and a robot that makes sharp turns at low speeds, it should easily follow the black line. So to begin, the robot should be programmed to make sharp turns and move at low speeds. The robot will zigzag erratically, but should follow the line. Once the robot is tracking the black line, then you can experiment. You can see if it will follow a curvy line. You can also increase the speed of the robot. How does that affect the robot's performance? Will the robot get to the end of the line faster? Will the robot fall off the line more often? Does it make the robot move in a straighter line, zigzag more quickly, or have not much of an effect? Another potential var variable is how sharply the robot turns. Unfortunately, with these models, you can't really control how sharply the robot turns, but if you could, well then how do you think that would affect the robot's performance? Will the robot get to the end of the line faster or fall off the line more often? Does the shape or width of the line affect your conclusions? Tell me. Finally, place the robot on the other boundary, the left side. Will the robot follow the line or will it quickly lose the line? And if it does lose the line, well, how do you need to change the code to make your robot follow the left side of the black line? Have fun building and testing these line following robots. Bye-bye.